Before we get into today's video, I want to give a big thanks to our sponsor, which is Sportsman's Guide. Sportsman's Guide carries anything and everything for outdoor enthusiasts, whether it's fishing, camping, hunting, shooting sports, tools, apparel, or whatever else, they've got you covered. Check out what they have to offer. If you see something you like, you could purchase it right then and there without being a buyer's member. However, if you join the buyer's club, you could save 5% on all guns and ammo and 10% on other outdoor gear. In addition, orders over $49 ship for free and you have different payment plan options. All of that for less than $50 a year. Again, a big thanks to Sportsman's Guide for sponsoring this video. Now, without any further ado, let's get on to today's video. Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plinking. And if it seems like I'm shooting this video in a bit of a rush, it's kind of uh, because I am. That black wall over there reflects that we kind of got ambushed by a big old Texas storm. All good. So it might be a quick video. So left to right, we have got the Steyr Aug, a little bit more of a modernized one. This takes AR mags, but funny enough, I, uh, I put this ETS clear mag just because it looks a little bit more appropriate, like the waffle translucent one, but it's an AR mag. But the uh, you know, tactical version with the pick rail, all that kind of stuff. And it still looks kind of modern correct because it's got a low power variable on there, a little one to six uh, from EOTech Voodoo. But a very, very cool gun. Again, chambered in 5.56. So fold away foregrip, easy takedown, barrel swaps, all that good stuff, but a little bit more of a modernized one. But this is the oldest platform uh, here. Moving on, this one is the FN, FS2000. S is the semi-auto version for the civilians. It's the tactical tuna, as it's referred to many times. It is the more tactical version though, in that it's got the pick rail, not the integrated optic. You can only take GI metal mags. Um, just because of the way the magwell is with its water tightness and all that stuff. It is in a compliment way, one of the uglier ones. And I don't know, it's just got this charm to it. It was never really shown to be a good gun in video games depiction and all that kind of stuff, but it's just one that's recognizable. It made a good impression on me and it's just a cool one to have in the collection. That, uh, this one right here happened to be built in 2005. This one is a new one based off, you know, the old AUG. But if we're just going off of when they were developed, the newest one is this right here. This is the IWI, Israeli uh, X95 Tavor. Uh, what you call it, the Tavor. It's the only one that's gonna be run suppressed, although the AUG can also be run suppressed pretty easily. The FS2000 is pinned and welded to have the minimum length uh, checked off. So anyway, OSS suppressor here, we're just gonna run it suppressed the entire time, because why not? In my opinion, the most functional one, if you wanted an AR alternative that happened to be a bullpup, a 5.56 semi-auto AR mag kind of gun, the most functional, in my opinion so far, has been the X95 Tavor. Ergonomics, good trigger, it's, it is the most modern one and it feels like it. But if we're talking recreational, I think the coolest one as far as just brownie points, Something about the silhouette of a freaking AUG <laughs> looks pretty damn cool. I really like this. Feels great too, by the way, as far as ergonomics, the trigger. It's actually all really good considering the development age on it. And then this one here, not so much for functionality reasons, but just to show off, because it is the unicorn of the group. You rarely see FS2000s, especially in green. And I don't know why, I just kind of like the look of it with the EOTech 512. So I guess in rarity terms, this one's the coolest. And I guess style points and silhouette of the gun, the AUG's the coolest, and functionality, the X95. That's all being said from my previous experience. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's just go ahead and shoot them all back to back. Good old AUG. This little charging handle that could kind of fold away upwards. There we go. Like I said, just super, super cool all the way around. We're going to put it on one power and uh, blast around. Got our safety right here. Red is dead. Chambered up. And uh, let's do it. Locks back, charging handle stays forward, non-reciprocating of course. We're not done with the AUG, but because we're in a rush, let's go ahead and move on right over. Now I've shot these guns individually before, no surprise. I haven't done it back to back, so let's see how impressions kind of change that way. I guess it's probably a good thing that the uh, batteries are dead in this, so if it's loud thunder, I can't tell. Mm -hmm. I'm in my own little world. <laughs> While I'm loading this, I want to hear it from you guys. Which one is your favorite, whether for functionality reasons or symbolic looks? You could get immature about it. It's Texas Plink, and I'm not going to judge y'all. I've only brought this out a small handful of times. Every single time I hand it to someone, they are just confused. It's a, it's a strange gun. Feeds very, very nicely. The only axe you can really see is the little toilet lid. Goes up. I thought you could really fix a jam with it, but so far it's been pretty reliable. Let's fire this thing on, and it is on fire.
I hear you. Way more snappy, and I didn't even realize that. But going back and forth, this one's got way more of a snap. Same cartridge. It seems like this one's got horizontal recoil. Feels like I go here and I jolt to the right. Let's try to double tap the silhouette. I can't be as fast with that either. But again, I got this just because it's different. It's fun. It's recognizable. But not until I go from the AUG to this thing. This thing is more violent in its recoil impulse and horizontal. So it's actually way easier to stay on target with the AUG than this one. For my FS2000 fanboys out there, again, we're talking recreational. I love them all. Let's go ahead and jump straight to the Tavor. Got some in here, about maybe 10 or so. And already it feels and looks way more modern. The suppressor might help for that. Oh gosh, dude, we're about to get just absolutely pounded by the storm. All right, the suppressor might help for that a lot, but this thing is soft, really, really soft. Let's try to go ahead and put the magnifier off to the side, double tap that silhouette. Oh, a little sparks on that one. Yeah, uh, again, now I really want to try an AUG suppressed. Tell you what, as far as what I'm going to do here, five per gun as fast as I can on the silhouette, see how effective I am. Jesse's going to polish off the mags. We'll call it good. All right, five on the silhouette. Safety. I missed one. You'll see what I'm talking about. That horizontal recoil is interesting. Ooh, X95. Yeah. Functionality, that's a vor, baby. Um, yeah, tell you what, we're gonna hand this off to Jesse. In my opinion, cool factor, rarity factor, if you're in the know, functionality. That's the way I put it. Jesse, let's see what you think. All right, so on the safety, push that that way. This one, you rotate the dial. This one's like an AR. All right, do your worst. Did you just hit my pistol target with that thing? You're fired. My bad. <laughs> I was just mag dumping. <laughs> <laughs> this guy don't miss. Oh, that one sounds good. It smells good too. <laughs> I'll put some Febreze up in that chamber. Number one, the Tavor. Just feels nice, not hard to shoot. Number two, for me, I like this one number two. I don't know why you don't like it for number two. But this one does have the best silhouette. Right here. So do you put this one as number two, huh? Yes, right here. I think it's cool as far as collectability factor. Why do you like it enough for number two? It is not as heavy as the AUG. Ah, just gotcha. For, just for shooting wise. I hear you, I hear you. Well, you guys let me know where would you rank these. Again, functionality for me, it's one, two, three. Cool factor, it's, I don't even know anymore. Anyway, guys, gonna end this like a vlogger. If you guys can see behind us, we got that dark wood. Oh, wow. I sound like a pansy because in camera it doesn't look that bad. We're about to get railed with some hail possibly too. So we're going to go ahead and put that up in the shed. In any case, they will obviously be showing off uh, in many videos in the future. I'm going to kick back up the five plinker series pretty darn soon, as early as next month. So they might make an appearance there. Let me know which ones you like the best. Like I said, which ones you want to see some more of. I'll probably be all three. So you guys will see all three. What you guys won't see any more of is Jesse. All right. That does it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and catch you guys on the next one. Take care.